Tina says the area of the shape above is 13 square units. Is she correct, yes or no? First of all, what shape are we talking about here? Can you point to it? A rectangle. Okay, but point to which one you were looking at. I just want to make sure you were looking at Okay. Blended learning is a classroom environment that is a mix between online learning and learning the traditional way through a teacher. The next one I want to look at is here. How would we find the area of that rectangle? What would we do? So a typical day in a blended learning classroom with the station rotations that we use here is that a student may engage in some sort of mini lesson or whole group activity where we're all learning the same thing. And then on their digital device, each student will be going through different stations. So in my classroom specifically, they are meeting with a teacher in a teacher station. They are on their independent digital content station. And then there's a collaboration station where students are working together, problem solving. In math, they might be practicing their fluency or working on a game together on a skill that's already been taught. I want you to make me a rectangle that has the length of four and the width of 13. So you might want to hold your sheet like this. The blended learning classes, uh, in that model, they can still deliver a, a large group uh, lesson. Then the children are able to work independently on skills that they have very clearly defined deficits in. And as they work on those skills, they get feedback uh, through the programs they're using, uh, personalized individual feedback. Uh, and then teachers receives that feedback as well. Yeah, you know how to do the mean, right? Because you're going to have the total. And what we're finding is that trying to understand how these kids learn and what their deficits are and how we can um, improve those deficits through the use of technology, uh, we're finding that um, the academic software that we're using now, that on an individual basis, there's enough data for us uh, through their previous learning to tell us the things that they are successful at and need to be stretched on, but the things that they're struggling with and need more reinforcement and understanding. How many numbers are between 20 and 39? The computers make it easier because it actually gives us work and then um, after we do the work it tells us if it's right or wrong and then if it's wrong it like explains why it's wrong. Where's the geese? Enormous storm shooting down. Remember, you're trying to find a rhyming word, right? The programs that they have for us, oh my God, they differentiate like I could never do. When I'm working with a group, they can work and it's on their level. So it absolutely differentiates for each kid's level. They're all working on the same article but you get two questions and maybe you have five sentences. You get eight questions and you have 10 sentences. So there's some differentiating there. When I'm working with another group, that they're actually doing something that they need that's on their level. Uh, they're also able to work in small groups uh, collaboratively uh, on projects, learning from one another, helping each other, supporting uh, one another, uh, and then also get to spend some time uh, in a small group with instruction from a teacher. Okay, so now look over here. Think about what the length is, what the width is, and how would you find this side? I think that many people have a misconception about blended learning, that the child is just sitting in front of a computer and they are just watching a video or they're just clicking whatever the answer is and are they really understanding it? Well, as a teacher in this for now three years, I can say that the kids are getting it. They are learning, they do feel like they're being heard, and they do feel like they're being taught. Now it's asking me a question, how many times did you skip count on the normal line? And I typed in two, because two times six equals 12, so that's how I got two. And this is what education is going to look like. These kids are surrounded by technology, and this will just help foster learning for these students. Technology clearly is not a silver bullet. As far as I'm concerned, the silver bullet in education or teaching is the teacher. But the one thing about technology is kids are around it all the time. So if you want what you're doing inside the schools to be relevant to these kids, you have to have some form of technology involved. Because now it's relevant, and then if you use that issue, that relevancy, to help them learn more efficiently and effectively, with the coaching from the teacher, 